I'm Danny and I'm going to be your teacher for this lesson. In this lesson you're going to learn about our food and how our bodies use it. Um, we'll find out about the different types of foods and why we need them, find out about why we need to digest our foods and we'll find out about the different bits of the digestive system uh, and what they do. So think about this question. What happens to your lunch when you eat it? Where does it go? Do you know? Can you remember anything you've done before on this? Write down what you think happens or talk to somebody nearby. If you want to, you can pause this video until you're ready to move on. These are some of the words that we're gonna talk about in this lesson. Don't worry if you don't know any of them. Um, we'll talk about them as we go through the rest of the lesson. Here's another thing I'd like you to think about. Why do we need food? Why do we need to eat? Can you explain to somebody nearby or write down why you think food is important to us? Again, if you want to pause the video, pause it now and then play it again when you're ready. So we need food for several different reasons. Some foods give us energy, which we need um, to keep our bodies doing important things, like keeping our muscles moving, keeping our brain working and to keep us warm. We also get lots of useful chemicals from our food. We call these nutrients. And our body uses these to grow, uh, to keep itself healthy, uh, and to repair itself when it gets damaged. We can divide up the different chemicals in our food. There's quite a few different ways we can do this, but here's one way that we're going to use today. The first group is starchy foods. These are often called carbohydrates. They include things like bread and pasta and potatoes, uh, breakfast cereals. These foods give us lots of energy. Often, Runners, the night before a big race, will eat a huge bowl of pasta to give them energy for the next day. Fruit and vegetables provide our body with vitamins and minerals that help our body stay healthy. So for example, things like oranges and lemons contain a very useful chemical called vitamin C, uh, which can help prevent diseases like scurvy. Foods that are kind of milk and dairy include milk, obviously, and cheese and yogurt. Um, these contain calcium, which is good for our teeth and for our bones. Protein foods, uh, such as eggs, meat, uh, fish, nuts, and seeds. Protein helps our body repair itself and grow healthy muscles and skin and hair. And then there's fat and sugar, um, which might include some milk products like cheese and butter because they've got a lot of fat in them, but also things like chocolates and sweets and crisps uh, and other snacks. These can give our body energy. So this is a, a summary of the, the main groups with, you can think about. So in our food might be uh, starchy foods, which give us energy, uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, milk and dairy, um, fat and sugar, and proteins. And so it's important to realize there's no such thing as an unhealthy food on its own. If all you ate was fruit and vegetables, you may not get all the other things your body needs. So it's good uh, to eat all the different food groups in good amounts. And so we call this a balanced diet. So let's think about uh, maybe a cheeseburger and chips. What different food groups do you think there would be in that meal? Can you think about all the different parts of a plate? Um, you've got the burger, the filling, the chips, the bun, the sauce. Write down what you think. Um, again, I'll talk to somebody nearby about it if you want to. Um, pause video if you want um, while you do it and then play it again when you're ready to carry on. So, what did you think? Were you right? We've got the bun, so that's a starchy food made from bread. You've got the burger, which is made from meat, so that's protein. Uh, the cheese is milk and dairy. The lettuce and tomato, maybe the gherkin, if you're into that kind of thing, would be fruit and veg. The chips would be potato, which is a starchy food. And the ketchup is made from a tomato, which is fruit and vegetables, and maybe a bit of fat and sugar in there as well. So can you think about the foods you've eaten over the last day? Could you put them into different food groups? Think carefully about each food. They might not fit neatly into one group. They might be made of several different things. Again, if you want to, pause the video, write the foods down and see if you can put them into categories. Play it again when you're ready. Where does that food go when you've eaten it? How do all those chemicals inside your food get to the right place inside your body to where they're needed? 
how do you think the food travels inside your body? Does it move as a big lump of cheeseburger or pizza? Would that be a very good way to transport it around your body? No, of course not. So our bodies need to do something to break that food into smaller things to make it easy to use and to travel around their body. So we need to digest our food. Digestion means uh, that our bodies chop and break down the food into tiny pieces. These pieces are so small um, that we need a really powerful microscope to see them. And this starts happening as soon as the food goes into our mouth, as soon as we start chewing it. You can think about all the chemicals inside our food as a long piece of string. It's too long for our bodies to do anything with. So inside our bodies are lots of special chemicals called enzymes. Uh, you could think of them like special scissors. They begin to chop up the long pieces of string into much smaller pieces. So these smaller pieces might then get chopped up some more. So why do the chemicals need to be made smaller? If you can imagine this sieve is our intestines, the food would be too big to get through the holes. So we've got a mixture of sand and stones here. And if we put the sand and the stones into the sieve and then start to shake it, the little grains of sand are small enough to fit through the holes of the sieve. But the big stones stay inside. You can see the small grains of sand falling through the holes of the sieve. The big stones are kept inside. And that's what happens inside our bodies. We break the big bits of food down into small bits of food, and then they're small enough to fit through the holes and get into our body. There are lots of different parts inside your body that have the job of digesting your food. So together we give this a name and we call it digestive system. Can you think of any other names of parts of your body that might be involved in digesting your food? Can you write some names down if you can think of any? Again, stop the video if you want. So this is what the different organs inside your body look like. Did you get any of them right from the, the last slide? If you can imagine, there's one long tube that starts in your mouth and ends up in your bottom and the food travels all the way through there. At the top is your mouth, and that's where you chew your food. Then when you swallow your food, it travels down a tube called the esophagus and ends up in your stomach. It sits there for a while. After your stomach, there's a thing called the small intestine, and then after that, the large intestine. And then just before it leaves your body, the food waste stays in a place called the rectum, and then it goes out when you go to the toilet as poo. Also in your digestive system is the liver, which is another very important part of the digestive system, and it helps with processing the food once it's been digested. Try and remember all the names of these parts of the digestive system. On the next slide, we'll see if you can remember them. So can you remember the names of each of these parts of the digestive system? Can you write some down? Pause the video, have a go, and play it again when you're ready to move on. So I talked about this a bit earlier, but these are the jobs of um, the different parts of the digestive system, the different organs in the digestive system. So the food starts in the mouth. Here it gets chewed by your teeth and mixed with a special chemical called saliva. This starts to break the food down. If you think your back teeth are really good at crunching, are really good at sort of chewing your food, they're flat and your food can get chewed up into a nice paste there. Eventually, when you chew your food for a little bit, you swallow it. And when you swallow it, the food travels in a long tube called the esophagus, and this pushes the food down into your stomach. The stomach is a big bag full of acids and enzymes. And inside there, the food sloshes around inside your stomach for a few hours. While it's here, the acids and the enzymes start to chop up and break down some of those long chemicals we talked about just now. 
and your food kind of turns into uh, a kind of soup it's all squishy and and and, and liquidy not a lot of big lumps remain after it's been in the stomach for a few hours, it drains out of the stomach and into the small intestine. And as it passed into small intestine, um, more enzymes will get squirted onto it, uh, made by other organs like uh, the gallbladder and the pancreas and, and the liver as well. As the food moves along the small intestine, it gets broken down even more. And then eventually, the little small useful chemicals, they're small enough now to pass through the wall of the intestine, like. Um, something passing through a sieve, the big bits stay behind in one side and the small bits can get through the wall, get through the sieve into the other side. And so they go into the blood and the chemicals that make it into your blood get passed over to your liver for processing and um, sent out to the rest of the body. And also in the small intestine, water gets absorbed here as well. There's quite a bit of your food that your body doesn't actually need. Uh, this includes fiber and includes things that can't be digested. If you've ever eaten sweet corn, if sweet corn's not been chewed, it'll make it all the way through your body. Uh, and it gets passed on to the large intestine. Inside the large intestine, water gets absorbed. So waste products um, from the body are added in here as well. So dead red blood cells and other chemicals, and they're the things that give it that brown color um, also, maybe some bacteria and stuff in there, which, which give it the, the, the smell. At the end of the large intestine is the rectum, and the waste stays in there until you're ready to go to the toilet. And when you do, then the undigested waste all leaves poo. So can you remember what each part does? You've got the mouth, the teeth, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and the rectum. Pause the video, write them down, um, or maybe you can explain to somebody nearby um, what the different parts do. When you're ready to start, play the video again. So here's a fun demonstration you can do. The plastic bag is the stomach. I'm going to put some cream cracker and some banana into the bag and then there should be some acid in there so I'm going to add some water um, to play around the acid but also there'll be saliva that you've um, swallowed has come down from your from your mouth. Inside the stomach your food gets squished so I'm going to do this now we're going to squish and squish and squish the food so the banana and the cream cracker starts to break down break up and get nice and squishy inside the bag inside the stomach so you should be left with a nice soup inside the bag. I'm going to take the metal tray, that's going to represent the body. And I'm also going to take one leg of a pair of tights and this will be the small intestine. Cut the corner of the bag carefully and then I'm going to pour the soup out of the stomach and into the small intestine, into the, the leg of the pair of tights. So gradually pour that in. As I then lift up the intestine, all of the small chemicals and the water are going to pass through the holes in the, the wall of the tights. Um, and the large chemicals, the fiber and other things the body doesn't want are going to stay inside the tight. You can see the milky liquid, there's all the sugars and all the good stuff that the body wants um, have gone into the, the tin tray, they've gone into the body, they'll go to the liver. If I now cut the tight and get a plastic cup, that could be the large intestine, then the food gets passed into the large intestine, and if I show you what it looks like, that's the, the food that's left behind. That's going to be the poo that will then come out of the, the rectum. Here's another fun fact. Did you know that you can actually still swallow food while standing on your head? Some people think that the food falls down into your stomach, but that's not quite true. The esophagus has muscles all the way along it, and they squeeze as you swallow the food um, and push the food along, ends up in your stomach. This means it doesn't matter which way up you are, you can be lying down flat, you can be standing on your head, the food still gets pushed towards your stomach. That's really good news for people that live on the space station up in space, because otherwise their dinner would just float around inside their throats and never reach their stomachs. Here's something to try out. 
although we call it the small intestine, it's actually quite long, really long. It's about six meters long. Have a think about how that might look. If you can, get some string, measure out six meters and see how far that looks. Also, your large intestine is a little bit shorter. It's about one and a half meters long. If you can measure that out as well, and then think about all of that tubing curled up and crammed inside your belly. If you're having a go at that, pause the video, try it out, um, or maybe have a try at the end when we finish. Another thing to think about as well is that actually you've got two pipes in your throat. There's one pipe called the trachea, and that takes air down to your lungs. And there's another pipe called the esophagus we've talked about just now, and that takes food down to your stomach. And while you're sitting here breathing now, the air is going into your trachea and your esophagus is closed off. But when you take some food into your mouth and you swallow it, automatically your trachea closes and the esophagus opens and the food travels down into your stomach. Sometimes you might accidentally swallow at the wrong time and the food goes down and you choke. And that literally is the food going down the wrong hole. So when we say the food's gone down the wrong hole, that's actually what it's done. Rather than going down the esophagus, it's gone down your trachea instead. And normally you cough, cough, splutter, and the food comes back up. We're almost at the end of the lesson. But if you want to do something creative when we've finished, uh, then we've got some other things you, you might like to do. Maybe uh, you'd like to write a story or a poem about a slice of pizza or a sandwich that gets eaten. What do you think would happen to it as it passes through your body? What would it be like? What would it feel like to travel all the way through the different parts of your body? Write a story or a poem or a comic strip maybe. Um, or maybe you'd like to make a model of the digestive system. Uh, get some modeling clay or get some recycled materials, plastic bottles, cardboard tubes, balloons, plastic bags, um, and make a model to show how the digestive system looks. And then maybe you could add labels to explain what each part does. So can you remember some of the words that we started with at the beginning of this lesson? Here they are on the screen again. Can you remember what all of these words mean? Could you point to where some of these things are on your body? If you want to, pause the film and have a think about all of these words. So as a summary activity, can you think about what we've done in this lesson? We can think of five things, A, E, I, O and U. A could be an adjective. So can you describe something you've learned in this lesson? E could be an emotion. How did this lesson make you feel? I could be something interesting. So can you write down something interesting you can remember about this lesson? O could be something that made you go, oh wow, something you found exciting. And um, maybe there's a question you still want to learn more about. So write these things down or talk to somebody else about them. I really hope you enjoyed that lesson. The next time you go to have breakfast or lunch or dinner, make sure you think about what kind of journey uh, your food is about to go on. It's an amazing journey and we wouldn't be alive if that didn't happen. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found that fun. Uh, I hope to see you again next time. Bye.